there's plenty of agents out there that are wanting to kill the right movie beast. Yet, it could be the worst thing that could ever happen to you and the estate agency industry. Be careful what you wish for. Robert May, thanks for joining me today. Um, you've been making some very interesting comments on uh, Property Industry I this morning. And basically, what I've just said in a couple of sentences is what you've been saying. Tell me, why should agents be careful about wishing that right move, the right move beast is killed? Um, I think, Chris, the consumer likes right move. Um, right move at the right price is very much the agent's friend. Uh, right move came along in 2000 um, as a way of getting agents onto the internet before a lot of agents could get themselves on the internet. Now, I've been saying for a number of years that the need to get agents on to the net has actually changed and it changed in about 2005, 2006, that getting on the internet isn't a problem anymore. Um, but by that stage, right move had become this beast where the consumer got used to looking for them. Um, and so for a number of years, I've been saying that if you have aggregation, but put agents at the center of search, then you get the best of both worlds. And I don't think right move should go away um, because there are a number of agents that are portal reliant. And by that, I mean, they are 100% dependent on the portals for their business. Um, but also then there are agents who are enjoying economies of scale discounts. I can't see those coming off right move entirely. So you will have this uh, split that has occurred previously where some people will come off naturally. Some people would stay on if the price was right. Um, uh, and there are people who will just stay on there. And as soon as you've got agents staying on there, then you have this pressure. So my thoughts are that right move. Go on. Go on. Um, so I, th I think that right move at a fair to all price um, is actually the, the best thing that will come out of this scenario. Interestingly, a number of people said is that is that if right move is killed, a vacuum will be created. Um, and some people have even said that it will create an open market where we can have five, six, seven, eight different portals. Surely having an open market is an advantageous. I mean, let's be frank, put your cards on the table here. Um, you do have your own portal. So surely killing right move off is going to be an advantage to you, isn't it? Uh, it won't because the the public, the consumer, still want one place to look. Um, until it's well known and well publicised that there is a Morley portal or a North Manchester portal or a Lakeland portal or a North Devon portal, there are lots of places for the consumer to look. If you can start with one central place that then drills down, whether that then uh, is from a national portal down into a regional portal into a town or village portal i think you've then got a hierarchy that works for the consumer but then also works for the agent so um yes i do have rummage for but it's very much designed that the data providers the agents or the house builders are the people who have got the best interest in designing a local portal okay. for themselves. Now, on Property Industry Hour this morning, an awful lot of agents jumped on you and basically said you didn't have your finger on the pulse. And you used the phrase educating a bully, not, not trying to, I think it was expel them or something like that. What did you mean by that? Um, I, I think uh, realistically, I, and this sort of goes back to the Myrus winter, uh, we had the si similar situation in 1992 with the North Devon Journal, where the editor at the time was very much a bully. He would use the large agents against the small ones and was pricing the small agents out of uh, local advertising. 
what happened in that instance is all of the agents came together there was a strike we all came out of the north devon journal but we all went back into the north devon journal on our terms and that was we all pay the same and whether you had a full page whether you had a half page or a little eighth of a page the rate was the same and everybody was treated the same and everyone was then content that the advertising met their own budget do you do you think it's fair that right move have has a different pricing structure for different agents because the bottom line is it's well known the bigger the agent you are the, the less you pay per office um, yeah, I, I think it's natural that there's economies of scale. Um, it was the corporates who set right move up, and um, from that point of view, it's only right that they do favour themselves. Um, but having done the figures as sort of, I'm now well known for having done them, when you look at the levels of profit that the independent agents give them, you know, there is a disjoint you know, they're, they're rather dismissively re referred to as small agents with low stock. They're the agents who are actually contributing most of the profit. What do, um, you, what do you think would happen if the right move beast was killed? Would it be advantageous to the industry or not? I don't think it would. Why is that? Um, I just think that the consumer likes them. Um, and I've always said I, I don't have a problem with right move as a portal as a product they simply charge unfairly and too much I mean I, I've just been onto their report and they've got they're sitting on 60 million pounds worth of cash and each year they give up 59 million pounds in dividends and 88 million pounds as a share buyback so they're sitting on a shed load of cash it yes. wouldn't to take too much money for them to do a charm offensive on the customer we all go back in the autumn and, and winter and every and all of a sudden all the agents will go with their tail between their legs back to right move probably at even higher figures because they've been naughty boys and girls is that is that a yeah fair um uh, I, I i think and it's sort of the conversations i've um been having around the industry around the agents um is the right move could actually afford during this covid crisis it would cost them about 35 million pounds to give agents um, uh, right move free of charge until Christmas. Um, if, you, if they did that, then they start to win hearts and minds. But uh, the problem is that they've upset so many agents over the years, and there will be about um, five or 6,000 agents who I don't think will come back from COVID. Um, and I think there are a lot of voices who are kind of resentful that they as agents have paid for advertising that they shouldn't have been buying um, because their register simply didn't support the spend. Um, and so there was a certain amount of sa face saving going on. I mean, I, I, I've been talking to people. I mean, as I said, I have no agenda. I'm, I'm, some people say I'm pro-right move personally. Some people say I'm anti-right move. I'm neither. I just like talking to people and finding out the facts. Yeah. But the three things that the three things that I would suggest agents do is is engage more with the leads that they do have from right move because it's amazing. You know, you look at all the reports from from uh, from, from especially from Yomdol that do the uh, the uh, mystery shopping results. That you know, fifty percent of leads don't even get answered. Uh, the second thing I'd strongly recommend people do is, is, is that they actually engage with their local account manager and actually have proper account managers. Interestingly, in Australia, where the average portal costs the most agents around £17,000, uh, that's pounds, not yeah. US Aussie dollars, um, the, the portal, uh, realestate.com, has actually uh, become almost like a, a back to being a trusted friend, or not necessarily a friend, but a partner. Uh, and and just accept thirdly except you've got to pay the, the dollar because let's be honest the, the portal is is surely to put the property in front of the portal not to get the leads is it am, am i talking um, rubbish um no well i've sort of again being old school um what i can't sort of get my head around is the number of agency bosses who allow their negotiators their senior negotiators to effectively delegate their job of matching mailing finding their applicants to the portals um, 
in, in my view, spending money on your own branding, your own local advertising, the portal should only introduce to an agency vendors and applicants who don't already know about a particular brand. So to sit there and wait for uh, oven ready applicants to come along and make viewing requests to make offers, I think that's the thing that's changing, that you go back to traditional agency skills and so Say your job is not to go on. Yeah, you know, not to wait until um, the applicant appears on your desktop, and I think that's the thing that will change. Is that there will um, uh, COVID will probably get a better quality of agent come out the other side, um, rather than people delegating, uh, as I say, to the in, uh, internet all the time. Do you? I mean, I'm of the opinion that most crms i would actually say two things is is that the crms and the portals have actually probably ruined a state agency we say that we're in a people business yet how many times do we put someone into a crm system and they never come out the other end look, look remember the good old days of actually matching people with hot boxes yeah and, and then I the second thing is, is the portals have homogenized the state agents we all look and act the same don't we yeah well let's say i think this is what i mean by delegating um, to the portals that you know there'll be a lot of people kind of currently furloughed um, and I think if I were in agency going through this period now I would be ringing up every single one of them and saying you know what are you likely to do are you just looking um, on the portals are you just making general inquiries what are you actually doing um, when we come out the other end of this. So rather than um, just waiting for them to appear in the desktops post COVID, you know, actually know who's going to be there and who wants to be, to be moving. I hate to use the word blame. And I think, as I said, do you think we as estate agents have delegated our, our estate agency skills to CRMs and the portals? And this could be an opportunity to actually come back to good old-fashioned estate agency where people are at the heart of everything and this mailing list and you know and, and actually being proper people um, I, I think the one thing it's done is that it is going to drive the industry almost back to where it was in mid um, 80s that your valuation was based on supply and demand, knowing who could and who couldn't move, when they could move, um, instead of relying on the AVMs. Um, what COVID has done is put a break um, on the algorithms. So you can't now just call up an AVM and know, oh, you know, it is now uh, April. So the, the AVM has moved on by 0.5 of a percent. Um, and so you are going to go back to, you know, are these applicants in a position to move? Are they going to get the borrowing? Can they sell their own house? So all of a sudden, the ability to look up a portal, look up an AVM and say, oh, yeah, this house can go on the market at this price. It will now be coming back to skilled valuers um, who are able to um, price properties that can be taken on and sold rather than oh let's whack this on the portals for this price plus two lots of uh, ten percent I, I mean I'm, i interestingly say that most estate agents don't even care about the listing they care more about uh they, so they don't care about the sale they care about the listing and the reason i can prove that is 60 percent of properties sell with the second agent yep all they care about is the listing so do you almost think that if we can engage better with right move probably detach ourselves more from the crms create our own personal brands then we should be and, and have, god forbid actually offer more of a personal service then correct me if i'm being daft here am i on funny drugs but we better charge more and we'll offer better service um, uh, the, the bit there, if I got you right, Chris, I would say engaging more and using the CRM data more um, because that is where you are able to log every single phone call, every single text message, everything that you've 
um, communication you've got with your applicant so you really have an understanding of those people who have house to sell in your area those people who can move and so again it is having that intimacy with your applicant database so it doesn't really matter <laughs> So it doesn't really matter if it's on a paper hotbox or CRM electronic, just actually use it and actually put the data in there. Because that's it's be absolutely it's it's being intimate with your applicants as you used to be. So with what you're saying is killing right move off might not be the, the wisest thing here. Don't wish for what you you want. It could almost be seen as a as another crusade that you know bashing purple bricks was the done thing a couple of years ago this could be it yeah. in reality what you're saying is and i must admit i have to agree with you in in an awful lot of it robert <laughs> okay <laughs> that it's, it's won't help your reputation no 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 a lot of people say am i pro right move or anti right move i'm <laughs> neither I, yeah. I, I talk to people i ask them questions um you should be careful what you wish for i i I think I think the, the, my biggest issue with Right Move is their total lack of empathy with the industry. And a, you know, okay, they really effed up, didn't they? When when they did that deferred payment, if they just came in and did seventy five percent off, everyone would have thought the sun shined down their backsides. Yeah, I just think if they could just be more caring, more empathetic, we're in this together, like the good old days of oh two thousand to two thousand and five. Yeah, and as I said, I'm not pro or anti. I you know they're. Yeah. they're I well, uh, well I, I think think it's interesting that you've mentioned, you know, that period running up to Fannie Mae, that, you know, my view is if they went back to their 2007 uh, subscription, adjusted it for house price index since, um, which would come out at about £335 a month for sales, £335 for lettings or a combined £500 what you'd find is agents would say this is good value for money we can see where it's coming from um, we can afford this and then get everything everybody paying the same if you then um, link that to house price inflation going forward um, then what you're actually doing is forcing right move to innovate onto the latest platforms um, it has to say one of the, the things i'm very outspoken is just how far behind the ball they are technically. Um, but if they were to innovate, which they haven't done because of shareholder pressure to protect the 76% profit margin, in actual fact, their fixed cost base would come down, their profit margin would stay the same, and they'd win hearts and minds. And that would be a win for them. It would be a win for agents. These are interesting times. Is there anything else you want to say to me before we finish? I think one of the uh, the messages is if there is going to be um, a move away from Right Move, um, then one of the things that Right Move isn't necessarily very good at is the letting side. Um, you know, going back three years now. I I've been sort of making the point that letting agents, because of the speed of lettings, because of the money involved in lettings, and because of the uh, the fee ban, having your lettings on right move just doesn't justify itself. Um, there's about 30 tenants for every available uh, property. So the reality is that I can see a staged withdrawal from right move starting with lettings um, and you know it's it's one of those things that if you're paying a subscription for sales and lettings and you are simply giving them away money and I would say you know go back post covid on sales but don't go back with lettings is there anything you want to say to on the market or uh, Zoopla or, or any of the other movements of agents in this? Um, I, I think, you know, my, my thoughts on uh, Zoopla is um, that Zoopla missed the opportunity um, last time round. They've sort of played a happy, um, almost bridesmaid to the bride um, supporting role. Um, and 
the whole um, duopoly um, that we've had for the last 10 years, you know, is courtesy of Zoopla taking out a prime location and find a property. Um, I've long said that when you start to introduce more competition, you will then get uh, pressure on fees um, from the uh, portals. And I think that's now seen uh, or being seen to happen. Um, I actually think Zoopla is the weakest of the three main portals. Um, I actually think on the market stands the best chance of uh, coming out this well if they would just, instead of following right move, they just did something slightly different. Um, but, you know, getting through uh, to anyone on the market to actually listen, um, you know, with Ian gone now, um, you know, it's, it's very much a case of of sort of not knowing how to get them to adjust the model that they, they've stuck to. They've had their five years, um, they have made inroads, um, and whether there is enough strategy to take advantage, I don't know. And what would you say to um, the agents? You know, there's a number of groups at the moment on Facebook and, 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 and on the internet about agents with their movements on, you know, the right move thing. Are they doing the right thing, in your opinion? Um, I, I think if they have a consistency of message um, that all, all of the groups who are feeling the same but naturally and geographically um, are spread about, um, I think talking to each other and having a consistency of message um, is absolutely is, key. And having an under yeah, because there is some splintering, isn't there? You know, you go in their Facebook groups and it's you, you use the phrase the people's front of Judea and and then yeah the popular people's front um uh, yeah so i i think it is one of those things that um if you have some people who will go back at a price some people who won't go back um, and having a consistency of message um that is where they understand that they can't divide and rule um you know and it is a case of thinking about what um, the corporate agents will do what the non-geographic agents will do those people who think that right move is good value for money um, you know, and that's what has to be considered thank you for your time today Robert if anyone else would like and this is a message to all the three portals or any of the groups or anyone's got anything interesting to say that they that is interesting intriguing or, or educational to the, to the world of UK estate and letting agency, give me a call and if I think you're interesting, I have no ax to grind against any portal whatsoever. All I want is, is, is that estate agents come out of this fitter, leaner and smarter. Because at the end of the day, this is an absolute wake up call, isn't it, Robert? From, it from how is. to run your estate agency. And yeah, well, well I, I, you, know, you know, on that, um, you know, I came into this industry in 1986 um, and I had to take myself to college to go and learn how to value properties, to do the job professionally and well. And I think that those negotiators, senior negotiators through to managers, now, if they want to stay in the industry, are going to need to find those skills again. Indeed. Th can I thank you for your time today? And, thank uh, you. And I wish you well, my friend. I wish you well with, as I said, it's quite obvious what you do have the rummage for platform that is not your agenda so i thank you for your openness and upfrontness on that yeah, no absolutely well you will only get honesty from me chris indeed well thank you for your time today robert and uh, thank you for everyone else for watching thank you thank you